Okay, my name is George Caldwell. This is my crystalline oscillator. It's a, um, it's a star tetrahedron octahedron. It's a Merkaba, uh, Merkaba with an um, uh, uh, octahedron on the inside of it. It is a double-sided pyramid. You can probably ch see it. Um, it's sometimes, some people call it a tantric star. I don't particularly like that name, but uh, that's what someone has called it. And um, every one of the tubes, it's 36 sections of tubes, has four crystal spheres, two neodymium magnets on each side in a repelling fashion, and uh, brass springs and, and retainer clips to hold them all together. Boom, boom, boom. And so each one of these tubes is highly generated. And it's just, uh, it's really a generator or an oscillator. And um, it sits above a pyramid. And the pyramid has, um, uh, it's full of crystals. All, all, every one of the tubes, and the whole thing is pretty damn heavy. And uh, you either sit or you lay under this, that's all you gotta do. Generally keep it about nine inches above the pyramid. This will, from here to here, that's what you do. And um, that's generally a, a good way to start out with it. You can experiment to do what you want. But um, boy, the thing just literally, uh, literally hums. Uh, I turned the power off one night here, when my first night I had it up. I heard it and I go, I'll be damned. The thing's humming. This is really cool. And so it's like, whoa. I knew I was on to something when I first started making this. And so um, you get a tingly feeling. A lot of people get a tingly feeling. It seems to go right towards problem areas in your body uh, or to your heart, like you know, spiritually. Uh, I hear a lot of people go, wow, I just feel good. There's times when I'm like um, a little grumpy, you know? And I get underneath this and it's like, zing. 20 minutes later, I pop out of the thing like a pop toaster. And it's like, I'm on my way. Boom, off I go. This thing rocks. It's, um, it's a wonderful device to have. And I hope that when people buy this um, and and share it, I hope they do share it because it's uh, the thing's just going to generate for decades. It'll just keep on going. And um, I I like keep my door open all the time. And people come in all the time. George, can I, George, can I sit underneath your pyramid? So they do. And I I love sharing this with everybody. And I hope to get as many of these things out the door as possible so this thing can be around. This thing really hums. It's. Um, 20 minutes is about, about the time you want to be underneath this thing. It's, uh, it's a bit much to, um, to do go over that. 30 minutes. There's times I spend an hour underneath it, but it seemed right at the time. But it, you can get over amped and get a little goofy, and there's too much of a good thing, you know. Three bottles of wine is different than one glass, you know what I mean? So uh, be careful with this thing. And um, it's just, it's, uh, it just spins your vibration. I think it's probably a healing device. This is a, a new uh, thing I've just developed, and uh, I don't know all the ins and outs of what's going on here, but the positive results from everybody on this has been amazing. It's like, uh, uh, it's, it's just rocks. This is what's inside every one of the tubes. Here are the two neodymium magnets, and uh, the four spheres, and you know, of course, the springs and retainers, of course, holding them in. That's what it looks like inside each one of the tubes. Um, and I had a chance to, uh, when I bought the, bought the magnets, I uh, had a chance to buy the more powerful ones. They have two choices on it, so I got the extra, extra strong ones <laughs> because I wanted this thing to go woohoo. And so, um, this is what it looks like inside of it. You can back up a bit. Mm -hmm. um, the magnets are gnarly. I've been, I, I bled with these things. You actually get them in the wrong place and it's like, whoa, man, and uh, they're real strong. Uh, I knew I was onto something. Just the magnets alone is going to do something, you know. Um, basically, I start out here and I, um, I was going, this was a welding jig to begin with. I was planning on welding this thing. I spent years as a welder and I was going to weld these up, um, but they're so damn sensitive. Um, the crystals, the, the magnets, um, certainly the brass springs are so sensitive to heat that um, we could use the heat sink blocks, you know, and all, but, you know, we decided to glue it. So what I did was we went to um, epoxies, and, um, and so I was really concerned about conductivity, and so I use um, copper powder, a really fine copper powder for the glue method, and uh, uh, I was really concerned about the scene just flowing, so it seemed to work. The glue was the right way to go about it. The brass springs, I got them so um, they're not too strong. I um, every time you push crystals together um, in force, you generate energy. And I just respect of the crystals. I did not want to just jam real strong uh, springs onto them, you know, just for respect. And so it seemed to work. Um, the thing is just more powerful than I needed it to be. 
and so um, it, you know, gentle is, is not a bad thing. And so I want respect for the crystals, and so that I did. Generally, this is the jig to do it. I, I make a second one, and then I uh, have a cutting device here. I cut it, jiyung, chikung, and chikung, and they have a three-pronged thing like that. Then I come over to uh, one of the tetrahedrons, and I just stick it on. And um, I had to use a wood, I had to come up with a wood jig, because the magnets want to push onto everything, so, uh, and not in a non-ferrous metal. Non-ferrous metal means there's no iron in it, so stainless steel, copper, brass, um, these are all, don't have any iron in them, so they're non-magnetic, and so, um, that's how this works. And it's generally a jig. There's a lot more clamps and, and fidgets and things like that that hold on. This is basically how it works. I glue it together. I got to make it really tight and strong when I do the gluing process and wiping it up. And uh, this is actually a finished one that I'm going to be putting up somewhere soon. These are the crystals here that um, I use for the, the tubes, uh, for the pyramid tubes. And these are actually pretty golly gosh darn good. I went through a few vendors and um, these are pretty good. I got a few ones that are cloudy, and um, it's uh, the clearer ones are the better ones to use for these kind of applications. So, man, these are not bad. And so, I unfortunately, I have to break them. In later models, I love to have rounded spheres made for the tubes, which is like a lot of balls to put in there, like 850 or so. But um, this is more economical this way, and I have to break them up smaller. And um, I do a good job of breaking up really small, like about this big, and I ram them into the um, into the tubes because I want to pack as many in there as possible. I really want this thing to, to uh, you know, be as strong as we can get it. And so this is what I do. Not bad. These are a good source where I'm getting these right here. And so I just want this thing to really sing and it does. And so um, you'll be happy with the results on this one here. This is what I use for the tubes.